Hello, this is Akram Jafar, and today I'm going to present picture tests and practical anatomy of the thorax. This video is about thoracic wall, lungs, and pleura, part 3. You may use the video as a revision or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, pause the video and spend some time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. What is the side of the lung? Give three features shown in this view. Identify the structure with which chamber of the heart it communicates. First of all, this is the mediastinal surface of a lung, and it obviously shows that there is one fissure and two lobes. The fissure is the oblique fissure separating the upper lobe from the lower lobe. This is most likely the left lung. And then there is another feature, which I can see here, the presence of the lingula. Although from this view, I cannot detect the deep cardiac notch, which is supposed to be here, on the anterior surface of the lung, but I can clearly see the lingula, which is a tongue-like process that represents the middle lobe of the right lung, and it is part of the upper lobe of the left lung. And this is another feature here. Of course, you can confirm the side of the lung with yourself by looking at the general shape and mentally trying to fit it into your chest. But when you are asked to provide reasons, this should not be a reason. The reasons here are the presence of one fissure, two lobes, the presence of a lingula. I cannot see clearly the cardiac notch, but this is another reason that it is a left lung. In addition to that, I can also see that there is an impression for the arch of the aorta and the descending aorta, which is only present on the left side. Structure B is one of the components of the root of the lung, passes through the hilum. We can see here the structures at the hilum of the lung. We can see the artery above, and then this is the bronchus, thick wall, and you can see that there are some cartilages in the wall. And then we have the pulmonary veins, anteriorly and inferiorly. So the inferior structure is always a vein. It is the pulmonary vein, and it communicates with the left atrium because it carries oxygenated blood from the lung to the heart, but it's called vein because it carries blood toward the heart. The photomicrograph represents a section in which of the following parts of the bronchial tree. Now let's look at the section. The section clearly shows the presence of a hyaline cartilage. The hyaline cartilage is in the form of a C-shaped hyaline cartilage. There are no cartilages posteriorly, so it means that there are no cartilage plates. Cartilage plates around the circumference of the bronchial tree is a feature of a bronchus, whether a main bronchus, a lower bronchus, or a segmental bronchus. So this will exclude 4, 3, and 2, because these are bronchi, and they should have cartilage plates all around the circumference. I cannot see cartilage plates posteriorly, and although this cartilage does not look like to be C-shaped, but it is in fact C-shaped, but section does not pass through the entire C because these cartilages are not exactly horizontal. They are set in an oblique level, so a, a horizontal section does not cross the entire extent of the cartilage, and the section goes with the trachea one. Structure A, shown in the endoscopic view, is located at which of the planes 1, 2, or 3? Now, this is an endoscopic view of the trachea. You can see here the C-shaped coastal cartilages in the wall that keep the wall open. Posteriorly, the wall is flattened because it has smooth muscle, trachealis muscle, and it is opposed to the esophagus. And this level is at the bifurcation of the trachea. This region is called the carina. It is the projection that is located between the left and right main bronchus. Bifurcation of the trachea is located at the level of the sternal angle. Now let's look at the levels one, two, or three. As you can see here, this is a sagittal section of the thorax. You can see this is the anterior body wall. This is the manubrium of the sternum. Here's the body of the sternum. You, you can see that there is evidence of segmentation because the sternum, the body of the sternum is formed of segments that fuse later together to form one piece. And then you can see the xiphoid process here, which is still cartilaginous. 
So this is a section in a young subject. One passes through the upper border of the manubrium of the sternum. It is not at the level of the tracheal bifurcation. You can see the trachea here. This is the section in the trachea. Behind it is the esophagus. And the trachea bifurcates at this level, which is the level of the sternal angle, number two the manubriosternal joint between the manubrium and the body of the sternum. So structure A is located at plane 2. Of course, here 3 is away. There's no trachea here. 3 is much below and is almost located at the level of the right dome of the diaphragm. Going back to section 2 or to level 2, this is called the transverse thoracic plane, and it passes anteriorly through the sternal angle and posteriorly through the intervertebral disc between T4 and T5 vertebrae. Structure B is the esophagus, and as I mentioned, it is both the esophagus and the trachea, they start in the neck, but the esophagus is more posterior. It is a muscular tube. It continues from the superior mediastinum into the posterior mediastinum, and then passes through the diaphragm at the level of T10 vertebra. That is the level of the esophageal hiatus in the diaphragm. Name the neurovascular bundle to which part of the rib is this bundle related, which nerves contribute to the formation of the plexus. Now the neurovascular bundle A is the intercostal neurovascular bundle and it is formed by a vein, artery and nerve. And as you can see that these neurovascular bundles, although there is much shrinkage here because of the preparation of the specimen, but the neurovascular bundle is related to the lower border of the rib. And in fact, more anteriorly, it is protected by the costal groove at the lower border of the rib. The plexus B that you can see is a plexus that is related to the esophagus. This is the muscular tube, the esophagus. On its left side, you can see the aorta, but the esophagus has a plexus, the esophageal plexus of nerves. This is an autonomic plexus, and it is contributed to by the vagus nerves, right vagus and left vagus. The right vagus and the left vagus, they pass behind the root of the lung, and then they join together in the esophageal plexus. There is a contribution from the sympathetic trunk, which contribute with sympathetic fibers that supply the esophagus. And then from the uh, plexus, the two vagi will recollect again to form the anterior vagal trunk and posterior vagal trunk. Each of these trunk will have fibers from both right and left vagi. So the plexus is the esophageal plexus, mainly formed by the right and left vagus and contributions of the sympathetic trunk. A 30-year-old female patient with shortness of breath and left-sided chest pain, chest x-ray attached, where you can see the presence of a fluid level. This is a pleural effusion on the left side. So what is the proper location for the placement of the needle to drain the effusion? You can see the vertical planes. The first one is just to the side of the sternum, then the other one is at the mid-clavicular line, and the other one is at the mid-axillary line. The needle should be inserted in a place that has pleura, specifically lower part of the pleura, but no lung, in order to avoid penetrating the lung. So this requires knowledge of the surface anatomy of the lungs and pleura. The pleura descends from the apex of the lung and the neck, crossing the sternoclavicular joint, reaching the midline, at the level of the second coastal cartilage. On the left side, it descends down to the level of the fourth, and then the pleura deviates to the left and descends about two centimeter to the lateral border of the sternum, down to the level of the sixth coastal cartilage. And then the pleura passes around the thoracic wall to cross the eighth rib at the mid-clavicular line, and then the tenth rib in the mid-axillary line, and passes around the thoracic wall to cross the 12th rib close to the vertebral column. The surface projection of the lung is almost the same as that of the pleura in the upper part, but the lung has a deep cardiac notch here, leaving a lingula, and then the lung reaches the 6th costal cartilage. It crosses the 6th rib at the level of the mid-clavicular line and the 8th rib at the level of the mid-axillary line. At the lower border, it is 2 ribs higher than the pleura. It cuts the 10th rib posteriorly. So as you can see here, that passing the needle at location one, the needle will pass through the pericardium into the heart and will not reach the pleura. There's no pleura here in the fourth and fifth left intercostal spaces just to the left of the sternum. In two, um, the, there's lung and pleura. Uh, same thing here is in three, there's lung and pleura. 
but in four, which is the ninth intercoastal space in the mid-axillary line, the pleura extends down to the level of the 10th rib in the mid-axillary line, but the lung extends down to the level of the 8th rib in the mid-axillary line, so the needle can be placed safely here. Ninth intercostal space, mid-axillary line. What produces this impression with which chamber of the heart it originally communicates? Identify the structure, what type of blood it contains, oxygenated or deoxygenated. This is a mediastinal surface of the lung. Usually the lungs, they have impressions on their surfaces that conform to the nearby structures. These impressions are specifically present in embalmed lungs, not in the fresh lung. This is an embalmed lung and showing an arch-shaped impression. So first of all, we have to identify to which side of the body this lung belongs. You can fit the lung to your chest, but better, you can look for features for identification. Like for example, here, there there is one fissure and two lobes. This is more with the left lung. Also, you can see that there is a lingula of the upper lobe. So this is definitely a feature of the left lung. The left lung is related to the left side of the mediastinum and the arch structure that is present on the left and produces an impression on the lung is the arch of the aorta. So this is the impression of the arch continues as the descending aorta and the arch arises from the ascending aorta. You can see the continuity of the ascending aorta of the arch is their continuity with the deep cardiac impression that is produced by the left ventricle. This is the chamber of the heart with which it communicates. The structure B is located at the hilum of the lung and it is one of the large components of the root of the lung. So it's either a pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein, or a main bronchus. The other structures that are present in the root of the lung are very small. They include nerves, bronchial artery, and lymphatic vessels, but they are not as big size as this one. This is the pulmonary artery. Artery is located usually, it is located above in the hilum, A4A, artery above. The veins are usually located anteriorly and inferiorly, and the bronchus is located behind. So B is the pulmonary artery, and the type of blood it carries is deoxygenated blood. But it is called artery because it carries blood away from the heart. Which nerve is most likely injured by an enlarging tumor at the region A, phrenic, vagus, or sympathetic trunks? Which vein is initially compressed by an enlarged lymph node at location B? This view of the lung shows the mediastinal surface of the lung. Obviously, this is a right lung as you try to fit it into your body, although the middle lobe is not very clearly shown. A is pointing at the apex of the lung. You can see that there is a shallow cardiac impression that is continuous for an impression for the superior vena cava and another small impression here for the inferior vena cava. Both of them, they open into the right atrium which produces the impression, the cardiac impression of the right lung. A is located at the apex of the lung, and at this location, it is the sympathetic trunk that is so closely related. You can see here the part of the lung that is related to the vertebrae, to the thoracic vertebrae. The phrenic and vagus nerves, they descend down from the neck more anteriorly. They are located between the subclavian artery and the subclavian vein, and are located more anteriorly here. Then the phrenic nerve passes in front of the root of the lung, while the vagus nerve passes behind the root of the lung. Now regarding B, the section, the vein that is related to the upper part of the root of the right lung, and actually it leaves a, a small impression, is the azygous vein, the arch of the azygous vein, which arches above the root of the right lung in order to enter into the superior vena cava.